Okay, welcome to our batik lesson here, our session with batik. What do we need? So you're going to need uh, several things. One of them is uh, some cloth and here I have a 15 inch by 15 inch square of just some muslin fabric and it's just a simple kind of cotton fabric that uh, I guess was was first originated in Bangladesh um, thousands of years ago I guess um, but this is a very simple fabric and uh, it does have some sizing in it often when you buy it so I'm going to recommend that you take this and then just kind of rinse it out in a bowl of water of course it's cotton so it'll shrink a little bit uh, but you could either you know if you have an iron too you could iron it out after you you um, kind of wash it out in water rinse it out in water uh, that that'd be up to you but it'll be a little more crinkly when you're done with that but you need some you'll need this uh, some some fabric uh, again this is not quite a bright white bleached white but it's uh, um, kind of a creamy muslin uh, you're gonna need uh, some glue now I have some gel glue here but some white school glue or whatever will work too it's just school glue uh, so I'll be using that uh, you're gonna need some uh, acrylic paint so you'll have some paint you'll have to supply and then I just have you know pencil paper some pretty pretty basic things so first uh, we're going to start with thinking about uh, for this experience uh, a, a design and, and let's think about this uh, iterative grid and you know I'm going to start thinking about you know what is the normal kind of grid you know something like this right that's our kind of Cartesian XY kind of grid but if we start to bend for our design I want us to start to bend and manipulate this so I could take all those vertical lines and maybe I put them closer together here but they start to relax as they come across like this getting wider and wider okay that could be cool and I could leave all the ones otherwise or I could do something like this where they're closer down here and they relax and get further and further apart as they go up so it got smaller down here as it gets bigger this way okay something like that now what else could I do I could add a little I could put the whole grid on an angle so um, I mean I could be working this way with the grid I could set up kind of fun something fun or I could put a bend in that grid I think you're getting the point okay so just starting to manipulate that well let's put a bend another way let's see if I go this way with these all right so you can see these are all kind of iterations or manipulations of the grid uh, for my design uh, today what what I am kind of thinking about is I'm thinking about this kind of I made a little circle here but a grid that's going to be bulge out or come come like this and then kind of be affected by by this circle that I made so these lines that do something like this and they kind of bulge out all right and that's what I'm thinking about to change up my grid otherwise out here I think it'll all just be kind of the same like that and then maybe they do the same thing coming the other way all right so I'm thinking about my design and I've traced it out here um, for kind of the the top of this at least is kind of what we're we're looking at and then my next step is that I decided that I would kind of randomize a little bit with my grid uh, by putting some these lines in that go corner to corner and what I mean by randomizing is that I just need to go my rule is I have to go corner to corner so I could bend out like that I could just bend this one the same as I did that one Maybe the next one does that and so on and so forth throughout my design until I get all these different you know they're just kind of randomly bending from one corner to the next okay so that's that's my kind of 15 by 15 sheet now you'll notice after shrinking your fabric that it won't be quite 15 inches by 15 if that's how you cut it 
And uh, then the next process is to, to transfer this drawing onto our muslin. And how we do that is by laying our muslin over. If you've drawn a nice heavy line, which you see that I did here on mine, I did a nice heavy line, dark, dark pencil. Um, I hope you can see this here, but um, I can see it pretty decent. Um, I, can, I can see here my lines underneath. Um, and this could be taped down so that nothing's going to move. And then um, you could either, with your pencil, go back and retrace those if you wanted, or what I'm going to suggest is that I actually just am going to go right in here with my glue, and I'm going to start to glue uh, over these lines and start to glue all those lines in. All right? So uh, basically with my glue in the nozzle, I open it up, and I have everything fixed or taped down kind of tight, tight as I can, and then I just start you're going on those lines and basically start in a corner and you, know, you probably don't want to work over your where you've already gone but maybe if you're right-handed I might start up in the up left uh, corner and just kind of work my way out or to start at the top and go down that could be a way to to do it but just tracing over all those lines that I have all right that will look uh, something like now this one I've already started putting paint on but you can kind of see this these lines it will look something like that. It's this light blue. After that all dries, and again, you can hit it with a hair dryer, put it in front of a fan, or just let it fit, sit for a few hours. When that all dries, we're ready to go to the next step, which is actually applying the acrylic paint. So there, um, it's again a simple deal where I'm just going to be using uh, a brush and trying to stay within my my cells of my design and just going through and make my design. Now mine, I have some pretty small little shapes and you might choose not to go quite that small but you know I don't, I don't maybe want all your shapes to be really large as, as well but it can be fun to do some of those little details. It takes a little bit longer. When you mix up your paint uh, you can you know take it straight from the tube but what I like to do is just you know, a little bit of extra water in there, not a ton, but just a little bit of extra water um, can help it just soak in a little bit. You'll see that as it moves through, you know, it's, um, if your paint is too dry, you won't see any of this kind of color really on the back, but this is kind of starting to seep or soak in a little bit, which I think is kind of a good thing. So that's what you'll be, you'll be working on. You'll, be, you'll cover this whole thing uh, with your, your design and I'm leaving it up to you to choose and select your colors. You may be inspired by what we saw by James Sienna with some of his colors. You may choose a totally different palette, but keep in mind some of the things that we've talked about with regards to color. Really make up. Maybe you go complimentary a little bit. Maybe, you know, what would look nice with this? I think that compliment could look kind of a yellowish orange. Maybe to compliment with this might be look really nice in some of these other cells when I get that far. When you've completed all that and that's all dried, the last step is just taking it back uh, to the water and uh, letting this soak a little bit as this glue will soften. This glue has made our resist, just like the wax does in a batik. This batik, will, this glue is our resist. It basically closes off any possibility for the paint to soak into those areas of the cotton. But then we take it over to the water. Now, most likely you'll experience some lightening of your color. So where I might see a very deep, rich blue, this, when I wash it out, is unlikely that it'll stay quite that deep. It may move up in value to something more in this range, lighter. But I still think this is going to look pretty nice. They may, again, look a little more pastel or a little bit lighter than what you're used to. So have know that. Uh, but they'll still be, I think, amazing and, and really wonderful. So, so that's really the process here with this batik. And again, something that kids will have, school glue, you know, acrylic paints. You might have to have a few of those at the school. But it could be a really fun thing to get into. All right. Well, best wishes to you. Let's do this. If we look at this batik for a moment, this is one that my wife made, a uh, cool looking one with acrylic paints uh, and with the glue method. So same kind of thing that we're doing. And you can see kind of how she used the color. Again, this was a little bit brighter. You know, this, this green was a little punchier 
uh, initially, as is, was the red and the blue, but it turned out turned out pretty nice, and you can see see there how uh, the glue was able to block out and resist the the ink or, or our our paint to get a pretty nice pretty nice look. When you've completed your batik, you may be thinking about, you know, how do I want to present this or show this? Of course, you could frame it up in a frame. You could also, because it's fabric, uh, many have chosen to do something like, you know, put it on a pillow, which could look really sharp. Uh, another idea is to use an embroidery hoop, which you may be familiar with, uh, but featuring, you know, your piece you know, or some part of your piece in the in the embroidery hoop could be a fun way. You know, if you liked a certain part of it or the whole thing, if you had a larger hoop, um, you could also, you know, present that, uh, hang that up on the wall. It looked pretty pretty sharp, pretty clean edges, um, and could look really quite nice. So those are other possible ways for uh, sharing with your students on how they could present these uh, once they bring them home.